Hi, welcome to My Quilting Beehive. I'm Michelle, and today I'm here to welcome you to the 2024 Marvelous Mystery Quilt with Colchester Mill Fabrics and My Quilting Beehive. Um, if you've made one of my mystery quilts before, today's video will be mostly review for you. If you're new, welcome. I'm so happy to have you join us. I'm going to go over some tips today that will help you have a successful year and make a beautiful quilt by the end of the year. If you are not a participant in the Marvelous Mystery yet, there is a link in the description below and you can sign up to be a part of the Colchester Mill My Quilting Beehive Marvelous Mystery Quilt. For our first part, I want to talk about accurate cutting. Whenever you're making a quilt, accurate cutting is so important. If you're off by an eighth of an inch every time you cut, when you put your blocks together, they are not going to be the right size. So when you're cutting your fabric, you are going to start by folding it together, selvage edge to selvage edge, and that is the edge where the writing is on your fabric. So you're going to fold it together and line them up so those two selvages, which are the straightest part of your fabric, go together and it's all smooth and flat. And then you're going to have to square up your fabric. And to do that, you can see the bottom fabric sticks out a little bit past the top one. It's just not quite perfect. I'm going to square it up. You'll use your long ruler for this, and you'll line it up. And I, you can line it up on the folded edge right there. My line goes right across. And down at the selvage, it should be accurate. And it's an odd number here, but it's uh, 3 eighths of an inch right across there on that white line. Um, so I'm making sure it's square. So it'll have a 90 degree angle from my cut through that line there. When you cut, make sure your ruler doesn't slip. And to do that, your hand and your cutter should always be together. So if I'm cutting here, my hand is here. Before I cut up here, I'm going to move my hand close to there. And when I'm ready to cut the top, I'm going to be pressing and cutting and holding the ruler up there. So to see that, I'll start here, press hard, and I'm moving my hand up. I don't take the rotary cutter away. I carefully move my hand up, and my hand is always near the rotary cutter, so it won't push it to the side. If I had tried cutting from here, and I, I'm not going to cut, but if I was doing it, my, my ruler could slip right to the side, and then you'd have a crooked cut. So you want to make sure when you're cutting, your hand is always nearby. After you've had your straight cut there, you're going to turn your fabric around. So you can cut right-handed. If you're, if you're left-handed, you cut the opposite way. But right-handed, you can turn it around so you can cut right-handed again. And now, <clears throat> when you're cutting, your good piece of fabric is always going to be under your ruler. So throughout the Marvelous Mystery and all the patterns, it's going to say, cut a width of fabric strip. So your width of fabric is from selvage to selvage, and I have it folded, so that would be the direction we're cutting. So right now I'm just going to cut a two and a half inch width of fabric strip. And that just means I'm cutting across the entire width of fabric to cut off a strip that I can use. Okay, just like the other one, I'm going to hold my hand close and then move it up. Careful not to let the ruler slide and slip it all the way across. Before I move my ruler, I kind of pull my fabric away to make sure I didn't miss any spots. And that good piece of fabric is under my ruler, and it's exactly two and a half inches from edge to edge. Then, once you have your fabric strip cut, this is going to be where you're going to be sub-cutting all the pieces you need from that section for each month. So this month, I'm right now I'm just going to cut one two and a half inch square. And to do that, the first cut, I'm going to cut off my selvage because you don't want to have those little dots and once that this one has little holes in it. And the other side has the white, and you can see the holes better in the white side. But there are holes here. You want to cut those off, even if the print goes all the way to the edge. You don't want to use that little end. So I'm going to remove all the way where the holes are and get rid of that piece. And then I can flip it around. You can cut through multiple layers of fabric at a time, but right now I'm just cutting one two and a half inch square because that's all I need for right now. So right there. And I'm careful to line up my ruler two and a half inches, two and a half inches, straight lines at the top and the bottom, two and a half inches across. And there we go. There is a perfect two and a half inch square. Take your time when you're cutting throughout the whole Marvelous Mystery. Make sure you are accurate in your cutting and you'll have better results. 
The next important tip I want to talk about that will help you have a marvelous quilt at the end of our time is to have an accurate quarter inch seam. And the things that will help you do that will work on our, our lining up on our machine and sewing with a good seam and pressing our, our seams accurately. I have cut out squares that are two and a half inches square. If you put two and a half and two and a half together, you get five inches. But when you sew them together, you're going to lose a quarter inch on this square and a quarter inch on this square, which will bring the finish size down to four and a half inches. You put your fabrics right sides together, make sure they're lined up nice and even. Take your time. Anytime you're sewing, always take your time. It'll make it better. Now, if your seam allowance is too big and you sew your two pieces together, and this is my example where my seam allowance is too big, I'm going to bring it up to my ironing board and I'm going to press it with my finger to open it up and I am going to press the seam open uh, towards the green on this one. So it's nice and flat and crisp and I made sure my seam folded over. Now if I had an accurate seam this should be four and a half inches wide. But you can see I used a large seam there and it only measures about four and a quarter. So if you put the two pieces together, this seam allowance is closer to three eighths of an inch. It was too big. So my final block won't be the right size and then it won't fit together with all the other pieces in my quilt. The other thing that sometimes happens is you use a seam allowance that's too small. If your seam allowance is too small, these pieces will end up too big for your quilt. So I sewed those together and that's with a small quarter inch. It's not quite a quarter inch, it's a little bit less. And I'm going to press my seam towards the green fabric. And if your seam allowance is too small, you can see this is almost five and three, just almost three quarters, four and three quarters, sorry. And so it's just too, the seam was too small and so now my unit is too big and it won't fit together with the next piece I want to put it in. So you really have to pay attention. Look at the difference between a large seam allowance and a small seam allowance. If your seam allowances aren't consistent, your pieces aren't going to be able to go together. So let's talk about how to get a perfect quarter inch seam. You can get a quarter inch presser foot for your machine. Some of them have a little metal gauge that comes on them, but on mine, the needle position is in the center and the edge of this foot right here is a quarter inch away from where the needle will be. So I use a quarter inch foot when I sew. If you don't have a quarter inch foot, some machines will allow you to move your needle position. And you can see my needle moves over to the side. If your needle position can be moved, you can adjust it to fit a quarter inch from the edge of whatever foot you are using. If you're using a standard foot um, like this one, this is not a quarter inch foot, but I could move my needle position to make it a quarter inch away from here. And to do that, you would use a ruler and you could measure to get it accurately put there to a quarter inch from the needle position. So you would have to, every machine's a little different, every foot's a little different. So you would have to sew and measure to get it just right until you find out where it's going to be. Um, the other thing you can, and you can see my machine actually has a line on it that says a quarter inch, so that gives me a little extra information on mine. But if your machine doesn't have that, a great way to do it is to take, I like to use a stack of post-it notes. They make special magnetic pieces that you can use, seam guides that you can buy. But if you don't want to buy a seam guide, you can take a post-it note and you can lay it on there. If you take a stack of them, it'll give you a little lip. And you can use that to help find out where your quarter inch is. To figure out where you want your post-it notes to line up just so, I took my foot off there so you can see better. This is a little measuring gauge and it's got a quarter inch spot right up at the top of it here. And I'm going to put that quarter inch gauge, I'm going to put my needle down. And 
And when your needle's in the down position, I can put the gauge right next to the needle, and that will show me where I need to line up a quarter inch from the needle. So you can do that to determine where your needle placement needs to be. And you can mark that. You can use a piece of painter's tape, sometimes people use, or you can buy one of the magnetic measure seam gauges that you can hang on your machine and it'll stick there. Whatever works for you um, is what you should would try. But you need to make sure you get an accurate quarter seam. It will take a few tries, a few practices, take some scraps of fabric and practice until you get it just right. So now with my paper there, my fabric goes up right up against it and it's a little stack so it kind of keeps it from slipping over it. And you can, so and on mine it's the edge of my quarter inch foot so I can use that. Sew your seam. And then you're going to press that and you want to test it to make sure it measures four and a half inches. So give it a press. And then bring it to your ruler and it should be exactly four and a half inches. So my unit, I had two and a half inch squares, two of them together. I lost a quarter inch on each one, so it brought me down to four and a half inches. Perfect seam. If you take your time to get your perfect seam now, make sure it's always accurate. Every time you go to sew, at the end, when we go to put all of our blocks and units together, they will always line up and match. Once your cutting is accurate and you know your quarter inch seam is perfect, it will be time for you to start working on your part for the month. This month you're going to be doing some strip piecing to make some four patches. So in your four patches, you're going to take your two fabrics, put them right sides together, and you've just cut a width of fabric strip. So I'm going to line them up, and we're going to sew along the strip, along the long edge. So make sure they're nice and even, and make sure you have your quarter inch accurate seam so that they come out to be, again, two and a half inch strips. They should end up at four and a half after you sew them together. So you're going to take your time, make sure that the fabric doesn't move, use what you need to keep that accurate quarter inch seam. And you know the machine's doing all the work for you, let the machine pull it through. You use your hands to keep it nice and straight. So it's just being guided through. You can see my right hand is just sitting there and holding the edge of the fabric. If I need to, I'll move my left finger to push it or pull it away if it needs to be adjusted. As you go, if you need to straighten out as you go, straighten it out. Take your time because if this isn't four and a half inches when you're done, your blocks will be too small at the end. So keep it lined up with the gauge on mine, the edge of my foot, and just let the machine pull the whole strip through and continue until you get to the end. Once you have your strips sewn together, you are going to cut them apart into units so you can make them into four patches. I have it laying here on my table and I'm going to use a ruler and my first cut is going to be to cut off that little selvage edge. When you're trimming, first you can check to make sure it's four and a half inches from edge to edge and then you're going to cut off the selvage. I'm taking my ruler line and I happen to be using the three inch line any line in your ruler, and I'm lining it up on the center of my two strips, right down there. And then I can remove the selvage, and I know it'll be square to the sew line. Nice, straight, easy. Once you cut that off, you'll be able to start from there, and you'll be able to cut the pieces that you need. Each unit should be two and a half inches wide. So you're going to measure two and a half inches, take your time, hold your ruler tight so it doesn't slip, and, and there you go. Now you have half of your four patch right there. You'll cut a second one, and that one gets flipped around, and those are ready to be made into your four patch block. 
When you're ready to make your four patches and you have all your units cut for as many as you need, you are going to bring them to your sewing machine and put them right sides together so that the fabric two and fabric three fabrics are on top of each other. Flip them like that, right sides together. Now, to match your points and have a beautiful center point, you want to make sure those two seams nest. And that just means when you put them together, you slide them so they're a touching. And right here, you see they're not touching. I'm going to slide them together until those two seams are right up against each other. One is going, the one on top is pointing this way, the one on the bottom is going that way. And you can get them very close together right there. Take a pin. And I like to pin with, I pin from the right side and then I pin at an angle so it catches the seam allowance on the left side. So it goes right through, that edge is nice and straight. Then you will sew with your accurate quarter inch seam. So you'll end up with a perfect square. When you get close to where the pin is, remove the pin so you don't hit it with your needle. You don't want to damage your machine. And sew all the way to the end. And there you go. The last thing I'm going to show you is a little tip for pressing these to get their seams nice and flat. Bring it to your ironing board. I'm just hitting it with the iron for a second. And I'm going to open that up and I'm going to use my fingers to pull the seams in opposite directions. So the one on this side is going to go this way and all the seams end up going around in a circle and you end up with a cute little four patch in the center of your seam allowance as well. So I'm going to just get them started with my finger here and then I'll flip it over and make sure that there's no tucks or puckers in the fabric. And Hit it with the iron. And you can see right there, your center point matches up perfectly. And the back, it's going to lay nice and flat in the center without any extra bulk. So this month, you're going to make several of these four patches. Once you make your four patches, you're going to get your other pieces together for this month and you're going to lay out your block with some four patches and then we have some rail sets that you made out of other strip pieces you're going to put them together so it makes your block just like this and you're going to use the same techniques perfect quarter inch seam you'll pin to match your points as you go and you'll sew these three together, you'll sew your middle row together and your top row together, and then you'll sew the three rows together to make your first set of blocks for the Marvelous Mystery. And be sure to post photos in our private Facebook group so everybody can see how beautiful your block turned out. The finished block, because of this, these are all two and a half, finished blocks should be 12 and a half inch squares. So measure and make sure they are. If they're not, take the time now to fix them because when we try to add more to them later, they will be too small or too big if they're not 12 and a half inches. I hope you have a lot of fun. If you're making the mystery quilt with me and you have questions, go into our Facebook group and feel free to ask all the questions you need and I'll do everything I can to help you. 